Hi, my name is Cy Horton and I'm a sales engineer for Farry UK. Welcome to part 2 of the Scene 7.1 New Features tutorial. To look at an overview of what we're going to cover in part 2, we're looking at the new integrated VR view for Project Point Clouds. Within this view, we can now handle billions of points within Scene itself without having to create any extra information other than a Project Point Cloud. If we're using a project point cloud, we'll get best results if we use the new closed surfaces feature as integrated in a previous version of scene. And there's no data conversion. As you can see on the screen, we have a new icon for VR view. We also support Oculus Rift as well as HTC Vive now. And for the purposes of this demonstration, I will be using the HTC Vive. When in the environment, you can now utilize the overview map feature within scene as well as take measurements in the virtual environment, view imported VRMR models, create your own screenshots and also look at annotations. With regards to setup of the Vive system, you first need to download the Vive software and also the Steam VR installation software. On their website there's lots of information on how to set up the installation, also pick your room and how to set up the environment. So in here everything that you require is in the box. For example when setting up a room you can pick a specific area or you can set it as a center point so you stand between the sensors and stand on the spot and move around or you can set up as a room where you can physically walk around the room. But in here it shows you how to set up your base stations to get optimum performance out of the HTC Vive as well as mounting the sensors and how to set up each base station securely looking at the settings and looking at the headset and installation of the headset or if you go over to the Vive Getting Started page you can also watch the setup video and download all the software from www.vive.com uk forward slash setup. For the purposes of this example here I have a series of 10 scans that I took of the Balcom Viaduct down in Sussex. The viaduct travels over the River Ouse and consists of 37 arches which are constructed from around 11 million bricks. As you can see here I haven't scanned the entire viaduct but just done a small proportion of it. So the first thing we need to do in order to go into the VR environment is create a project point cloud. I've already done one but if I go to update what I've done in here is I've used the closed surfaces option and full colour. So closed surfaces now utilises the voxel technology that we implemented in a previous version of scene. That then allows us to apply all the photographic information from the pictures onto that closed surface to give us the best point cloud possible. Once that's done and you've got your project point cloud, you've also installed your Vive software, you've gone and started the Vive software or the Steam VR software, all you simply need to do is then go to the VR view to go into the environment. So now we've done all the background work, we've taken our scans, we've registered them, we've created our project point cloud with closed surfaces and full colour, we've installed the Stream VR app and we've got it set up on the screen and ready to start viewing. So the first thing I have to do is go into scene itself and click on the VR view that will then start the new VR module. When that's done, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it full screen so you can see it on my screen. And the key thing down at the bottom of the screen, you can see first off we've got the headset that's turned on and we've got the two controllers that are turned on. So we're all ready to start moving around the point cloud. With regards to the headset itself, when using the headset you have to be very careful with this area here because it is very sensitive and it's where all the sensors are located. Also at the back, there is a connection system to tighten it down onto your head. So from a viewing perspective, you want it really close to your eyes, otherwise it won't be as clear. And you can see as I'm moving the headset around on the screen, it's moving around on my screen as well. So if I place the headset over my head carefully, put it over my eyes, and then tighten down the headset itself so it's nice and clear. I then look down for the two controllers which are on the desk and take the two controllers up. So firstly, as you can see here, I've got instructions on what to do. So at the bottom of the left-hand controller, if I pull in this particular paddle here, it will fly forwards and backwards in the direction in which the controller is looking. 
On the right hand controller, I can use the paddle here for measuring. I can use a teleport option on the back to zoom to a place, or I can also take a screenshot. Along the top, we have a series of other options which I'll come on to in a moment. So if I just close that down by pressing the finger button on the back, then here we can have a look around inside the point cloud, and we can look left and we can look right. If I just step back from the table a little bit so I don't hit the controllers, and if I want to move, I literally just look in the direction and pull the trigger towards me. And you can see here I'm flying down the centre of this viaduct. If I want to move out, I literally move the controller out, point it in a direction, and as it's going in one direction, I can look back in the other direction and I can start to look back at the environment in which I'm viewing in the VR. So here we can fly around, move left, move right, and look around all the environment at the same time. And this is where you start to get a little bit wobbly if you start to look down. So hopefully when using one of these, you're not scared of heights. So if I move down and look at some of the other options now, the one thing that's really cool is we can start to take dimensions. So if I want to know how high one of these arches are, using my right controller here and using the finger button underneath, if I pull the trigger once at the top of the arch, you can see now a virtual dimension is appearing on the end of my cursor. So if I then put it down at the bottom, down here, and you have to make sure you're on the point cloud, and then click, you'll see here now, if I zoom in, I've got a dimension of 9.238 meters. One of the really cool things you can do as well, if I pick up my left controller and point my right controller at the arrow, then in here, I can start to view the measurement objects. So you can see the dimension here of 9.238, but also we've got a horizontal distance where we're out of alignment, and it gives us then an auto-corrected true vertical dimension. If I don't want any of these dimensions, I can simply close them, or I can click to view them, or just literally get deleted. Also, when we're in here, if we get a nice view, so if I zoom back a little bit or walk back, so if we've got a nice view, something like that, what we can also do, closing this down again, using the thumb buttons on the side of the right controller, if I press the thumb button once in the direction I'm looking, it will then take a snapshot. So if we go back into here, and then we go to our snapshots, in our snapshot view here, we've taken a snapshot view of what we've been looking at. Again, we can leave those in there, or we can delete them. As we move along at the top, if I come into here, we've also got the overview map that I've been generated in Scene. So the overview map was a feature that was incorporated into the previous version of Scene. So in here you can see the locations of my scans, and having done this particular one myself, I started here and moved around. If I want to jump into any one of those, I just point at it, hit the locate button, and I'm straight into that particular location. Or we can zoom in and have a look at that particular location there, or using the right hand button, we can pan this around to have a look at the structure in the overview map. Go back to the full screen view. I'm going to jump into, say, that scan there and locate it. And then we're back into the point cloud. If we'd also put documents or annotation links in here, we can see those in the screen here. And again, all you can see is I'm holding the controller up to view the control panel, or I can just minimize that down and start to fly around. Again, dimensions wise, taking dimensions in something like this is quite difficult because of the size and scale. So if I wanted to know the height of the underside of that particular component there, down to the bottom, then what we can do is put it roughly on the floor here, and it will give us that dimension. Again, we can zoom into that dimension and have a look at it. If we go back to our panel, we can look at the dimension in here to see the variation that we've done and the ortho rectified vertical image. So we close that down as well, and then we can go for a fly around. So depending on how coordinated you are, eye-hand coordination, you could go for a fly down the centre of this viaduct and have a look, or you can fly out and start to have a look at it from different directions and look at it from the top. So as a tool, it gives you an awful lot of information to participate and collaborate with fellow co-workers, or to use in an environment where you can go in and do checks in areas where you possibly couldn't get close to. Even down to the fact if we went in here and tried to measure a brick, so if I come in here and measure to the edge of that brick, we've got a dimension there of 219, well the brick is actually 215, so I'm not far off, bearing in mind I'm in a virtual environment. 
So another cool thing we can do is we can actually incorporate VRML into this particular model. So if I take the headset off for the moment and place it carefully on the desk, then what we'll do is we'll go into scene and we'll actually bring in a VRML model. So in here, if I just minimize this for a minute, I'll close it down and then we'll minimize scene. I'll go into the import settings within scene. I'll go into import objects. It just so happens that I've got a ride on lawnmower that I'm going to import. Click OK. Click OK to that and it will import that into the system. Now the problem I've got here is this ride on lawnmower is in the incorrect location. So it's actually up in the sky. So if I go back to there, you can see it's up in the sky and it's woefully too big. So what we can do is go over to the model tab, go to the ride on lawnmower, right click and go to its properties. And then in here, I just need to change a few dimensions. So we'll go minus 72.5 in there, and then we'll go 90 for a rotation in X. We'll go minus 45 in Z. And then the scale wise, I've guesstimated it to about, be about 0 0.03 of its original size. And then we click apply and OK. We can maximize scene again, close the message down, go back to the VR app, maximize that, maximize that. So if we then put our headset back on and go and look for this particular lawnmower, we pick up our controllers. Now from memory, I'm going to place it over here somewhere. So if we go back up to the top and zoom into that location, now you can see we've got a VRML tractor in our point cloud. So that shows you how easy it is to set up and how easy it is to utilize a point cloud VR in scene 7.1. So, to summarise, we now have a VR-ready version of Faro Scene. From directly using a project point cloud with full colour and closed surfaces, we can now have support for the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, in which we can now use that virtual environment to take measurements, create snapshots, look at annotations, and navigate around using the overview map. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been of use and please feel free to watch out for forthcoming tutorials.